Hello Algebra 2. Chapter 2.8 is all about absolute value functions and I'd like you to know and we'll expect you to know five things from this section of the textbook. Um, first of all, what does an absolute value function look like? How would you be able to recognize it immediately as soon as you saw one? Second of all, when is it that they open upward? You'll understand what I mean in a minute uh, about that and when is it that they're going to open downward? Third, in order to graph them or just to understand what they're like and how they operate, where do you place the vertex of a particular absolute value function? Fourth, how do you draw one on a graph? And second, if you see a graph of one, how do you read it? All right, let's get started. Let's talk about an example first of all. It is a function after all, so we can replace y with f of x and f of x is equal, equal to, well, the simplest absolute value function is just absolute value bars with just one term inside. And um, in this case, we've got x there, so let's make a table of the possible results. What could y, or in other words, f of x, be if x were negative 3? Well, I've started filling this out here. If x is negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. And then just working to the right from here. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and it just continues like this. The key point to see is that the absolute value bars are stripping the negative sign off, and you're ending up with um, positive results down to 0, and then it goes back upward again. So notice the matching results, the matching <coughs> f of x values, the matching y values of 1 here or matching twos here, and so on. So if you think about this visually, what you have is a V shape. And if you did graph this, well, let's just start at the center. It's, um, it's often easiest if you start there, if you, if you find the place where um, uh, the middle point, and from here, just looking at it as a table, the numbers climb to the right, but they also climb to the left. So that's my zero point in this case. It's the simplest absolute value graph that we could have. So I've got a vertex, in other words, the bottom of my V shape at 0, 0. And if I plot 1, 1, and I plot negative 1, 1, I've got 1, 1 here and negative 1, 1 here, and so on for all the other points, like there's 3, 3, there's 3, 3, there's negative 3, 3, there's negative 3, 3. And what you're going to end up with is literally a perfect V. And that's always going to be true with these absolute value functions that we're going to be drawing. They will always be V shapes. If you see a V-shaped graph, think absolute value function. If you hear that it's an absolute value function, think V shape. Okay, so let's just try a slightly more complicated one. What if we multiply the whole thing times 2? Well, in terms of what the uh, Y values, or in other words, F of X values are going to be, here they are now in blue. They've just simply doubled in every case. But what does that end up looking like in a graph? It becomes steeper narrower if you want. So as an example, I've now got 1, 2 as a point, and there is 1, 2 right there, that point, and it's mirror, and that's another way of thinking of these Vs. There's a right side and then a mirror on the left side. Its mirror is over here at negative 1, 2. Okay, so this idea of it being a V shape then um, leads to the next question. Is it a right side up V? or an upside down V. And that's what I'm getting at when I ask this question, which way does it open? The answer to this, or the determinant, the determining factor for this, is going to be in front of the absolute value bars. The first example here opens upward, the second one opens downward. The key difference is the first one has a positive coefficient, it's actually one, and the second one has a negative coefficient, it's negative one. <coughs> so the third one, well, look, that's positive, and the fourth one's negative. So that's going to be upward and downward. And then the fourth, uh, fifth and sixth one, same thing happens. That it's always, this list happens to be always um, positive, and then negative, positive, and then negative, and so on. So here's a positive and then a negative. So upward for the positive coefficient. And this negative coefficient, this negative half here, makes a downward-shaped V graph. So. That helps some in graphing, but not a whole lot. Really, to start the process of graphing one of these, you have to know where the vertex 
of these um, these functions can be found. And there's this little green box in the textbook that has crucial information that I I, I want to spend some time on and really highlight here. So I have um, colored them in in yellow here, but I'm going to even talk about them in more detail than that. What you're going to do in order to figure out where to place the vertex is you're going to look at the H and K values. So let me enlarge this equation here, over here, and highlight the H and K in different colors. The H value, notice, it says X minus H. If there's a number inside the absolute value bars that's either being added to or subtracted from X, that's going to be something called your H value. If there's a number outside the absolute value bars that's being added or subtracted, that's going to be called your K value. So now look, let's look at this laundry list of examples here. My H values are all in blue here. And notice I haven't bothered to circle the operation, the sign here, when it's minus, because it's presumed to be minus. So anytime it becomes plus, I've gone ahead and circled that, because that's different than what we're expecting. So I've circled the plus there, and there, and there. And this K value dangling out to the right, well, the first two don't have a K value. But from then on, they do. And notice, according to the generic formula, these are assumed to be positive. And well, the, the third one and the last one are, but these two aren't. Those HK values are going to be the coordinates of the vertex. So this first one, again, it's assumed to be a minus sign here, so that's positive 4. There's nothing there, nothing is 0. So my vertex for this first one is at 4, 0. The second one, it's assumed to be neg a, a minus sign, but it's positive, so that's minus 5 that I put here. Again, there's nothing there. And the third one, as you can see, assumed to be a minus, minus h, but it's actually positive 2. So it changes its sign over here and becomes minus 2. That's the confusing thing about h. It's always going to change its sign. k is always going to keep its sign. So it's minus 2, keep the sign on the k, plus 1. Those are the coordinates of the vertex of the third one. Hit the pause button and see if you can figure out the vertexes for the other three. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. Here are those vertices, or vertexes, whichever way you want to say it. So pause if you like to study these and see if you got them wrong, why you did. But I'm going to move on um, and assume that you can uh, always hit the pause and fast forward and rewind whenever you need to. Okay, graphing one of these, it's a three-step process. The first is to plot that vertex. And so in the case of this equation, this absolute value function here, the vertex is going to be at negative 5, 0. I hope that makes sense from the previous slide. So I plot the point, negative 5, 0. The second step is to apply what I'm calling the slope on the right. The slope is this coefficient out in front of the absolute value bars. In this case, it's negative 1. So it's got a slope of minus 1. So I go down 1 and over 1. And when I say apply the slope, now I've got two points. I can draw my line, though in this case it's a ray rather than a, than a line, right? Remember this from geometry. It's a ray because there's this is the vertex. It's going to bend here. Now the third step is simply to mirror that shape on the left side. And that's what I've done here. So that's my graph, and I'm done. In fact, I'll just highlight this and fold it in. That's my graph of this function, this um, absolute value function, y equals negative absolute value of x plus 5. Let me do one more on the same graph paper. Notice step 1, plot the vertex. Well, this time my vertex is going to be 1, 2, positive 1, positive 2, so I plot that. Second step, apply the slope. This time my slope is negative 1 over 2, so I go down 1 and over 2 and draw my ray. And then my third step is to mirror that shape on the left. Done. There's one for you to do, highlighted in yellow. Hit the pause button and graph it on your own graph paper, obviously. OK, I'm going to assume that you've done that. Your vertex should have been at negative 2, 1, plotted like so. Your slope, and nobody else but me really calls it slope, so I put that in parentheses here. 
but your rate of change to the right from there is going to be, and remember, you apply that slope to the right, is um, uh, chain, uh, rise of 2 over run of 3, and that's what I have here, and then I mirror it on the left. So that green one is the graph you should have gotten for the one I gave you. Fifth step, if I give you an absolute value graph, similarly, there are steps, steps in reading it. First of all, remember the generic form of an absolute value function or equation is this one. It comes right out of the textbook. It's got what I'm calling the slope out in front. It's got an h value inside the absolute value bars and a k value outside. And those may be both zeros. The very first graph that I showed you, um, the coefficient was 1. The h was 0, the k was 0, so it was simply y equals the absolute value of x. But this allows for all the possibilities that we can be talking about. So if you remember that generic form, then look at the vertex. It's telling you what h and k are. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and apply that vertex, which is negative 2, 7, and I'm going to put it in there. Negative 2, remember, that's going to change its sign, so it's going to be plus 2 while the 7, the k, is going to keep its sign, and it becomes plus 7. Now the third thing is I read that slope. Well, I'm going, what is it, down 3 in order to go over 1, I think. Down 3 over 1, slope of negative 3. That's it. That is my equation, or in this case, function, for my absolute value function. That's finished. Your turn. Here are two for you to do. Hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'll show you the answers. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. There are the um, absolute value functions for the two graphs that I've shown. Notice that in the first case, the vertex should be at negative 1, 3. Sure enough, it is at negative 1, 3. The second case, it should be at positive 3, positive 4. And sure enough, the vertex is <coughs> at positive 3, positive 4. Slope here should be positive 1, should open up. It does open up, and the slope is 1 over 1. Slope here, negative 2, should open downward, and down 2 in, in order to go over 1, and it does. All right, that's it. That's all there is to um, the material that I need you to know from this section. So there's your homework assignment, and I'll see you next class, and we'll go over those homework questions.